invite our Eisenhower High School students to lead us in the play. Mr. Sharon. Here. Dr. Bridges. Here. Mr. Jester. Here. Ms. Romeo. Here. Colonel Waters. We have special guests tonight. We do have special guests, and for this, I'm going to ask Ms. Paula Bowen from Eisenhower High School to um, approach the podium, and she's going to bring some students, and we have Mr. Kirchin here, and we got a lot of information on this one, so, but it's very good stuff. much about the Oklahoma City Memorial bombing because, you know, nobody really talked about it except for Miss Bowen. So it was first brought upon me when she talked about it. And um, I didn't know anything about it. So when we went to the museum, it was just like, you know, seeing it and how, you know, much it impacted, you know, a lot of lives during that time. It was almost kind of like 9-11. That's what I, you know, when I think of it, that's what I think about. So. It was just very sad to see all of those lives lost because of, I like to think it's because of the government, but you know, people, you know, they have their, you know, <laughs> whatever, what's in the books, but um, it was really eye-opening to see all of that, and, you know, it just, it was, like, heartwarming, and I really enjoyed my time there, and I learned a lot. Hello, my name is Michael Briggs, and I really, like she said, I didn't know much about the memorial because I've been in the Oklahoma like four years ago. So I thought it was an enjoyable experience, and I thought it was nice to get to see the gates and see the times on them. I didn't really know what they meant when I first got there, but it was enjoyable to figure out like what it meant and everything. And I felt like it was something really important in Oklahoma history that everyone should get to go see and know about. Well, um, the rest of my students, this is Elena Hangley. She also went on the trip. Chris Stellahoy, Jacoby Harkey, and this is Kristen Hernandez. They also went on the trip. We had a student, he's not with us this evening. His name is uh, Matthew Michaelis. And as we toured the museum, we came upon uh, this memorial hall with all the um, plexiglass boxes and the pictures of the heroes, is what I refer to them as, of that day. And so Matthew, um, there was one picture he was fixated on. And uh, I walked away, and he came running to me. He goes, Miss Bowen, Miss Bowen, Mr. DeMaster. And I said, who's Mr. DeMaster? Because I don't think he, he was part of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. DeMaster, he was an Eagle Scout, 
And I said, he was. I said, well, where is it? Where is it? Where is it, sweetheart? And so he runs back to the plexiglass box. He says, look, see? And he says, um, I think I want to donate my, my Eagle Scout belt, belt buckle. And I said, are you sure that's what you want to do? And he said, yes. He said, um, I said, call your mother. <laughs> Make sure that it is OK. <laughs> and so he called his mother. And uh, she said yes. And we did the necessary paperwork uh, for him to donate that buckle. And uh, it sits inside that plexiglass box at the museum. The family of Peter DeMaster heard the story. And they uh, gave permit, special permission for that belt buckle, the Eagle Scout buckle that he worked so hard to get. He told me all the hours of days and nights that it took to get that buckle. So. Um, like I said, Matthew is not with us. He is currently in uh, Tennessee, and uh, he's a great student, an awesome young man. And once again, we just like to thank the Lawton Public Schools Foundation because this would not have been possible without their support. Um, it was my understanding that they don't normally fund uh, field trips, and so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to give these kids something special. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just bowing our students to stay up there. This isn't done. Okay. We're not finished. Mr. Orr. If you all don't know Ms. Jerry Orr, Jerry Orr is with the um, Boy Scouts. <laughs> and Mr. Orr, will you explain to us what it means to be an Eagle Scout? Yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, with you today to recognize Matthew. And what I want to do is give you a little overview if you don't know what it is to attain the rank of Eagle. The fact that a boy is an Eagle Scout is always carried with its special significance, not only in scouting, but also as he enters higher education, business, or industry, and community service. The award is a performance-based achievement whose standards have been well maintained over the years. Not every boy who joins the Boy Scout uh, program earns the Eagle rank. Only about 5% of those that in scouting earn that rank. This represents more than 2 million scouts who have earned the rank of Eagle since 1912. Nevertheless, the goals of scouting, citizenship and character, development and personal fitness remain important for all scouts, whether or not they uh, attain the Eagle Scout rank. To earn the Eagle Scout rank, a boy must fulfill requirements in the areas of leadership, service, outdoor skills. Although many options are available to demonstrate the proficiency of these areas, a number of specific skills are required to advance through the ranks. The Scout rank, Tenderfoot, Second Class, First Class, Star, Life, and then Eagle. To advance, a boy must pass specific tests that are re organized by requirements for each of the merit badges. Of the 130 badges available, 21 must be earned to qualify for Eagle Scout. 13 badges are required to include first aid, citizenship in the community, citizenship in the nation, citizenship in the world, communications, cooking, environmental science, personal fitness, personal management, camping, and family life. At each uh, of his rank advancements, the boy takes part with the Scoutmaster's Conference. He confers and an accomplice to help the Scout to set goals for himself and align with his individual talents and abilities. At each conference, the Scoutmaster helps him evaluate how well he has accomplished his present goals and then works for setting new goals. Beginning with the star rank and continuing through life in Eagle, a scout must demonstrate participation in increasingly more responsible service projects. He also demonstrates leadership skills by holding one or more specific youth positions of responsibility in his patrol or his troop. Advancement. One uh, of the eight methods by which scouting aims are achieved has four steps to the award level. First, the scout learns. Then the scout is tested. Then the scout is reviewed. Or the scout is recognized. The final step 
and the advancement involves a uh, presentation of the badge, usually uh, at a ceremony of the entire troop and his parents and, and friends. Boy Scouts with disabilities may qualify for Eagle Scout rank. Each Scout must earn as many of the required merit badges as he can. He then submits application for alternate merit badges, and his uh, Boy Scout uh, Council will determine which alternates they will be given to him. Boy Scouts were founded in 1910. So I won't. But it was founded in 1910. They'll be 106 years old this February. And I really appreciate being a part of this. Thank you. I think you have something in your in your pocket. What 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 this drawer is um I haven't got it yet. You haven't got it yet. We got it. It's in your coat pocket. Oh <laughs> I'm 81 years old. And <laughs> <laughs> what um, what the idea? Denise Duffy contacted Mr. Orr after she heard this story and asked Mr. Orr because he's he knows all the connections in the Boy Scout. He has procured a belt buckle to replace Michael. Or this, this is the uh, this is a buckle. It's a very prized possession uh, by the boys. It's a uh, uh, one, and I think he'll be very surprised and pleased with. Yep. And so, there's a letter coming from everybody there signed it. The board signed it, and he will be getting that in the mail very soon to replace it. And I, I'm just so proud of him. He's he, once an eagle, always an eagle, and he's an eagle scout. So. <laughs> I'd like to thank the schools. The schools. I, I used to be the district executive here after I got out of the army, and the schools participation in the scouting program is very much appreciated. The teachers have a hundred million things, but I really got to understand about what the jobs the teachers have. But they always managed to have this because they felt it was an important part of citizenship with, the, with these boys, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Thanks. Now you all may leave. If you want, you're welcome to stay in for the exciting board meeting, but you're free to go if you want. Thank you all for coming and speaking, and thank you for representing our love public school so well. And thank you for allowing your students to come here and share their experience with us. I can't go to that memorial without crying. My husband won't even take me anymore. Yeah, they won't admit it, but me and they were crying. Yes. I did. Yes. Um, I'm Kristen. Um, I already used to be a student of Miss Brunt, of uh, Miss Bowen. And I like to say, personally, from the like, bottom of my heart, she is the most amazing teacher ever. Aww. Like, I look up to her so much. I love her. Like, when we had the opportunity that she said that she wanted to take us on this trip, as high school students, we're like, field trip? <laughs> we don't go on field trips. Like, that's so elementary school. But then, like, she started explaining it to us, and we were like, okay, this could be fun, this could be fun. And then she was like, there'll be food involved, too. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go on this trip. And she was like, but y'all have to be good, though. You know, you got to be good in class, and you got to work hard, and, you know, you got to work hard for things. And when I went on this trip, it really changed a lot in my heart because, you know, you saw a different side in young people when you actually saw like the lives that were lost and you usually would think that young people wouldn't care about stuff like that but it really really touched a lot of kids hearts and i've seen kids that i never thought i would ever see cry at that place and they were just it was a really really blessing experience and i couldn't have been i couldn't have been more blessed to be able to have such a great teacher that was willing to like want to do this with us and I just want to thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Orr, be sure you leave us the buckle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave with it. I want to make sure everybody knows that this was my, this was this gentleman, Dr. Diggins' idea, and I, uh, I pleasure to call him friend and a fellow Rotarian, and I just appreciate being part of here. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jerry. We will get that out. Thank you. Thank you all again. We do, in addition to the um, printed report, which I, unless you have any questions, I won't um, go into. We have Mr. Chris Sharkey from the Special Services.
and Mr. Sharkey is in charge of um, what we would consider <coughs> special education. He um, will share what's been going on in the department this year. Good evening. I'm Chris Sharkey. I'm the special education director. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity just to be able to come and give you a quick update. Uh, the special services in, is involved in so many different things. So uh, I can take an hour or so to cover that, but uh, I would get ran out of here. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a quick overview. Uh, we service about 2,700 students. There are 2,700 students that are on the IEP. That's roughly about 18% of the total population of Walton Public Schools. Um, what we do is we provide various related services. And uh, if you look under IDEA, which stands for the Individuals with Disabilities Act, it says related services means transportation and other supportive services that are required to assist a child with a disability. So what we do is we have numerous uh, related services. They can include transportation. And I'll be honest, we work with the transportation department very closely and very well. Uh, I have to say they do a tremendous job. They transport over 600 special ed students per day. And those are ones that require special transportation to get to their school and back home. So we're very thankful for them. Uh, we also have a nursing department. And the nursing department, while they provide a lot of services for our special needs students, the one thing they also do for the, di well, several things they do for the district is that they provide uh, assistance for students, regardless of their IEP or not, with uh, uh, diabetes, asthma, plan, uh, any, anything where there might be a medical issue related, they're involved. In fact, they provide CPR and first aid training for our staff throughout Lawton Public Schools, and they do vision and hearing assessments for every pre-K through fifth grade student within Lawton Public Schools. So that, they do a tremendous job at that. We have um, three staff members that work in uh, physical therapy, and with them, they're working with students to, that, to help them perform functional activities. Some of our students can't move around, cannot get around, and they work with them usually on a weekly basis, but they also assist the teachers and the personal care assistants, so they'll continue to work with them throughout the week when they're, not, when they're working with other students at other schools. We have... Um, 13 OTs, and they're working with those students mainly on self-help skills, um, uh, sometimes with visual perception, and also things like um, handwriting, how to hold a pencil, things that we take for granted. They're working with those students so they can be successful in the classroom. Um, we have 13 licensed professional counselors, and they're, they're throughout the district. Uh, many of our students, some might have disabilities where they, uh, anxiety overcomes them when they get to school, or depression does, and they can't make it through the day. Our counselors work with them on a regular basis. Usually they're meeting with them at least one time a week, and how, how they can handle when anxiety does, does occur, or when they get upset, the proper way of handling that. They do a terrific job, but I will also tell you that they're there when those emergencies rise. And in case uh, a student has um, a meltdown, they work with them, help them get past that moment, and get back into the classroom so they can continue their uh, learning. Um, we have 31 speech therapists. Uh, they deal with 935 students, okay? Now, if you look back on the handout I gave you, it says speech language impairment 314. That's how many students are actually qualified under speech language impairment category, but they deal with another 600 students that may have um, qualified for under the category of specific learning disability, but they also needed speech services as well. So they do a tremendous job, and I, and I have to give them kudos as well because they are working very closely this year, and while they've always worked with the students, they're actually dealing with words that the kids will be seeing when they take the Oklahoma core curriculum test. So it's not something new to them. Even though the teachers are working with them, it's so they'll get a better understanding of the word, and those are things that they're working with our students throughout the district, and it's going to benefit those 935 students. We have uh, 15 psychologists or psychometrists. What they primarily do is they evaluate our students. Uh, there's two reasons they would evaluate. One is 
uh, a student needs to be reevaluated to see if the student still qualifies for services. Maybe he no longer qualifies for services. Uh, or if a, the initial evaluation is they'll take in all the data, they'll evaluate the student, and then with their written report and their observations, they'll meet with the IEP team, and that IEP team will decide does the student qualify under a specific category, and if so, what are the services they need to provide for that student. Uh, we also have a vision certified teacher. That vision certified teacher works with about 20 students throughout the district. Those students have some type of a visual impairment and uh, she does a tremendous job with them. Now, those are a lot of the related services that we provide for our students. Um, I will tell you probably one of our biggest assets are our teachers and our federal professionals. They do a tremendous job. They work with the students on a daily basis. And it can be a student might be in a self-contained classroom setting where they're with that teacher all day, or it could be uh, where a teacher uh, I'm sorry, where a student struggles in math and maybe he's in high school and they're with that special ed teacher for that one period so the teacher can help that student because that student could be anywhere from three, four, five grade levels behind and they're trying to get him the skills that he needs to be successful. Um, again, we have some tremendous staff. I know it's a quick overview, but I just wanted to present that to you to give you a little background. If the opportunity arises again, if you'd like to maybe have a, a presentation from our speech department or our nursing staff, we'd love that. Or if there's a specific disability that you might have questions about, we'd love the opportunity to uh, come and present that to you as well. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate you very much. For perspective, 2,700 students means our special ed department is larger than 90% of the school districts in the state. It's a big group. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Your report? Under report of the superintendent, I have um, item A, consideration and action regarding proposed revisions to policy EFD, student travel. Let me make sure I get to the right page. Very minor changes to that. This is just to be aligned with the state, or? This really, um, the, the only, there are only two changes, and I think they're on the front page, instead of relationship to context, and they add cost accessibility, and all students are afforded the opportunity to attend. I think it's a more inclusive policy. Any questions? I make a motion to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. Mm -hmm. Under item B, we have consideration and action regarding proposed revisions to policy FDCR1 student attendance. And, and this one, again, really the effort most on, on all of these is to clarify and simplify our attendance policies. Um, the changed, um, and, the, and the big confusion parents have is we used to have excused and unexcused absences. Now we have verified and unverified by state law. Um, and so the, really this is just to con, um, simplify, clarify, and to make sure we're not being redundant or overly confusing. So any specific questions? I'll second. Please call the roll. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Mr. Chester? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. For item C, I have consideration and action regarding proposed revisions to policy FDCR2, Internal Activities Review Committee. Um, and a lot of this is the committee that reviews if a student plays football or is an ag and they're out a lot. There's, by state law, we have to review and, and, and decide if they can um, um, exceed the 10 acts, absences, et cetera. This, um, again, just simplifies the policy because a lot of these elements are redundant in the other areas of the absence, absentee policy. So. Move for Second. Please call the roll. Jester? Yes. Mr. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. <clears throat> Under item D, we have consideration and action regarding proposed revisions to policy FDCR3, absences procedures. And again, this is an effort um, to um, just clarify, make it simpler, uh, more sequential for parents to understand, as well as um, the sites. I'm going to 
Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. Okay, and item E is consideration of action regarding proposed revisions to policy FDC E1, affidavit of understanding. And this basically lines this up to all the previous um, changes that we just adopted. So, please call the roll. Mr. Jester? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. Mm -hmm. Under item F, we have the information item. It's just an information item on the um, 2014 bond update. And um, Dr. Bridges tweeted me a picture, to, or texted me, not tweeted. I'll never get it to tweet and think. I don't know how to tweet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I if you just need Dr. Pope. Um, but she sent me a picture of Eisenhower High School. They have started the windows. And on the visible side, on the north side of the building, yeah, I've got good. a lot of excitement. Um, they've run into a couple. One of the things is some of that brick facade that was and unable to get behind the window, so they're having to work with that. And so started in a little different area than they expected to, but nothing we, they're not going to be able to overcome. Um, but the bond, again, and uh, another issue out of the bond that just started this week is also the security systems. Um, yeah. Mr. Rice and, and other people have been looking at, they, they've actually started the installation process, awesome. which means they're measuring that sort of thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> it always takes longer than I think. Um, any questions about the bond fund? Actually, I did that backwards. That was the sales tax I was talking about. I'm sorry. On the bond fund, on the bond fund, so I did it backwards. My apology. I actually discussed item G on item F, but on the, um, um, regarding the bond fund, um, it, um, we just did the final walkthrough, uh, Cruz did, from MacArthur Middle School roof. So um, I think that's a huge milestone for the district. That was one of the worst roofs in the, in the without a doubt, in the district. We've gotten rid of the lava rock. So we can, and, and they, they've done the eaves, they've really done a good job, and happy to say the last rainstorm, it did not leak in MacArthur yeah. Middle School. So <laughs> it's a huge improvement. Um, and also on, on top of that, the, the sites are working on both bond and sales tax issues for um, the grounds, playgrounds, fencing, as well as the next round of what they want for educational materials and supplies. So the sites currently are working on those two things. Um, from both funds, so any questions on that? Um, and then we have item H, was information item, and the, and the, the first and most obvious item is um, Oklahoma State School Boards Association decides that on January is School Board Appreciation Month, and um, Dr. Pope and all her principals got together and they, um, they went with a the hero theme, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose. It was on purpose, okay. So, um, and, and I want you to know that is Mr. Jester's actual, actual physique right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the pots and the plants are from, um, posters are from every school, and the pots and the plants are from the FFA teacher, Lindsay Holbert. Oh, nice. oh, that's and they were grown by the Advanced Horticulture, those are yours to take home, and um, Miss, Miss Cordes and, and helped line that up with them, and so, and I. There you go. So a cooperative effort there. So you actually get to take those home. So, and it, it, so I think that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I just have a couple of things to update you on besides that. Um, um, three stories I wanted you to be aware of. Um, we did receive a $1.2 million Department of Defense grant from our grant department. Um, and it's a military connected academic support program and an educational grant. Um, and the, the funds were received in October, but we um, have just started to actually implement that. And it was just um, in the paper recently. Um, we were identified as an area of high need. And again, we're, we're focused on, on STEM on as much as we can on these things. I think this one, however, might, might actually be a reading grant. Yes, improved reading. Um, we also had a story in the paper recently with a, a MacArthur High School student to be the voice for education. Lewis Jackson is on our state Joy Hoffmeister's super, state superintendent, Joy Hoffmeister's advisory group. Mm -hmm. So when Joy Hoffmeister meets with students and asks them, Lawton has a voice. So Lewis, he, he's actually been here a couple times. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten to know Lewis pretty well. So yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect representative for Lawton Public Schools. And we, and we will have him come at some point in this semester to share his experience. I think that would be a great thing. And um, 
Another story is the Lawton Public Schools 2015 Teacher of the Year Award, and Cameron University has named Woodland Hills Kindergarten teacher Cheryl Tate as one of three persons slated to receive the 2016 University Distinguished Alumni Award. And if you, um, again, great selection. Now I have one thing that I want you to pass down, but you have to give it back because it has to go to Lincoln School. We received this in the mail the other day, and it's a letter. Somebody had found this at an antique shop, and it's a 1929 picture of Lincoln Elementary School. So um, that is, again, we, I'm, I'm gonna commit, I haven't told Lincoln about it because they probably wouldn't let me have it this long. But we're gonna get that out to Lincoln and let them have that and put it in their um, display case. Lincoln, an antique store, yeah, I was found an antique store in California. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> and made it all the way here. I don't think the person even knew who we <coughs> had any connection to Lawton. They just Spend sent it. They decided to send it. Yep. So That's I'm, really incredible. I'm going to write them a letter the kids, of appreciation. Maybe we can have the kids write them a letter. That's an even better idea. That's awesome. But we will do that. Um, this was also in the paper. On January 5th, we received a letter from the McMahon Foundation. Uh, the Man Mac, Man, with McMahon Foundation um, donated $383,000 to Lawton Public Schools for two things. One is to update our science labs in our middle schools and our high schools. And, the and that's incredibly excited, exciting. That just covers our middle schools and our high schools. But also they, gave, they, they donated enough money to complete LCD projectors in every classroom of our school district. Wow. wow. That will complete, because the LCD projector it's not only replaced the chalkboard of old, it has replaced everything. It is the portal to everything in the classroom. And so we haven't had enough. Um, they donated not only the projectors, the mounts, but also the um, labor to have the electrical installed wow. because uh, to, to get it installed in, in a timely manner. So very, That's very Alvin. good. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, complete, complete faith in them. But that is... Um, that's all my announcements. That's the best part of the board meeting, I think. So, any questions? I just want to say thank you for the posters tonight. Yeah, especially yes. love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did say that was all the announcements, but I have one thing you need to see. You've oh. got to see in addition to that. I'm going to brag on Miss Ellis and Mr. Wade. Um, this is just a, if you get it, I, I have an extra one. I think we have to pass one all the way down to um, Kathy and everybody else. But you've heard about um, workers' comp and the incredible work. Ms. Ellis um, shared early in the year the incredible difference in, in just the last couple of years that, that, that the district has made. I mean, at that point, we shared how the workers' comp had gone down um, to um, $2,400 at one point, our first, second quarter this year, from averages of 13, 19, 28, even $40,000. But the graphs here, as you can see, um, Lawton Public Schools has gone down in every, just about every measurable way. Um, that's um, thanks to the incredible work of all of our staff, but primarily Miss um, Miss Ellis and the Safety Committee. Um, just incredible work that's saving the district real funds, um, and it's also making our district safer. So, it's incredible information. Give Miss Ellis um, anything you'd like to add to that, Miss Ellis. You want to add anything to that? The only thing that I look at is we received this information in the summer from the Oklahoma School Insurance Group comparing uh, the Oklahoma standards uh, to the national standards. Well, you know how I am. I want to know well, how does Lawton compare to every other school district in Oklahoma. And that's why I thought that information was very enlightening because it gives you the opportunity to see that we are working diligently on our safety committee and our safety programs. And we are seeing progress with regard to the savings that are occurring in our district. But not only that, our employees are safer because of it. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Now I'm finished. I apologize. Does anyone have anything they would like to remove from the consent agenda? Yes, I'd like uh, page 36, please. Page 36. Can we approve the rest and then come back to this? Yes. Or? Would anyone like to make them? Are there any other questions? We can go ahead and approve 
Would someone like to make a motion to approve the remaining part of the consent agenda? Approve all the consent agenda except the items listed on page 36. Second. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Jester? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. Ronio? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. I need some clarification and then a couple of questions Absolutely. Uh, regarding uh, the Freedom Elementary and item number two. First off, um, I take it if it's the made, made to the Treasury of the United States that the electric bill is paid to Fort Sill or to the government. We don't have a separate PSO line. It goes to them first. Is that, when, when we is that take, what the check is for? Yeah, that's kind of confusing. Once we take full, com, full um, possession of the building, right now everything is working through the Washington, the grant process. And so it is kind of confusing that we have to pay the Treasury of the United States. We're everything going through the grant process, so all of our bills are filtered through them. Um, and once we get the full building and take full possession, then everything will be a little more recognizable. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's just, and the, and the simple truth is um, electricity has been a lot more expensive out there than we anticipated. It is a LEED certified building, which means it's supposed to be incredibly energy efficient. But right now we have one end of the building that's, that's still being constructed incredible amount of electrical equipment, so it's just turned out to be a lot more expensive. We've had, um, Mr. Smith's had the electricians go out and looked at it. We won't be able to, um, when we get the building done, then we'll be able to um, have a better idea of control on the actual, just the heating and cooling of the building. Right now we're running everything else in the world for construction as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, because that was my biggest question, because before this building was built, it was supposed to, we paid extra money for it to be Absolutely. green, uh, energy efficient. We're supposed to have this solar stuff where it cuts down on the lighting bill, cuts down on the heating, because we're supposed to have the heat from under the ground, all of these resources. And then when we have uh, a bump up, I just, do you know when we can really nail that down as far as what, if there is a problem, and because you know this, if that continues, that would be a grant. No, 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 that's no, that's just for the rest of the year. Okay. The year okay. Um, what I anticipate, it'll be finished. You know, um, they've told us it'll be completely finished by April first. We think we'll have the, the construction will be complete, um, and then we'll be able to actually start the building, just running the building, and so costs should go down significantly at that point. It's also a matter of that building being incredibly. There's, there's two other factors. One. The system, it takes a while to find, to, to get this system tuned and make sure we're, um, um, because it is so efficient. The other thing is, I think the hallway turned out to be a, um, a little bit of a wild card. If you think about it, we've got a, a, a hallway that connects those five buildings that's, um, I think it's 25 feet long. Mm -hmm. It's a full 40 to 50 feet tall and 800 feet long. If you think about it, that's as much square footage as a football field. So that has got to be factored in. Um, I think that's been a little bit of a wild card. That's a huge amount of area to heat and cool. And so um, I think once we get the building complete and get into it, where we're no longer building things and pouring concrete, I think it'll be a lot easier thing to determine exactly where those funds is, is, would that be an architect's question? Because aren't they supposed to, I'm no architect, but I mean, they, they use the, the, the usable space and, and then they, they look at all of that as far as costs are, aren't they? Um, it would be, yes. And, and again, once we get it finished, we hope to be able to nail down exactly where they are. Okay. Is, it, some, it, of that, is some of that uh, energy loss due to the heat and air because of, of the, the building that they're building on? I mean, are, is, it, is it closed off or? Um, well, it's somewhat open. It's so upset. Well, it's just like any other, um, mm -hmm. you know, any other construction project. You just know, got windows, or right. like plastic. Or um, and they've got a they've got a temporary wall in between the old section or the old section, the current section, <laughs> the, the section everybody's using right now, and the new section of the building, which is yet being built. Once that is torn down and the buildings are joined, we'll have a we'll have finally have the building open and be able to to mitigate um, and understand. Is there a target date on that, on what they think they could complete? They believe it'll, it'll be finished. We're going to be able to, um, I think they, um, April 1st, they'll be completely out, completely done. They were pouring the concrete for the um, pre-K drop-off just the other day, last time I was there. So they're progressing pretty well. But again, the, even the pre-K center is bigger than, than a lot, well, most of our elementary schools. Um, it's a big, it's a huge building. Mm -hmm. So if afterwards, if, uh, if we still have a much larger than anticipated energy bill, I guess we can go back to the architects and say, hey, boys, let's get this fixed. Yeah, it, um, do. It, it, hopefully. But it is a very, um, 
um, it's a, that's a big space to fill. I, I don't know if that's taken everybody's surprise. I really, again, at this point, my understanding it is the construction, coupled with students being in the building, we didn't have that last year. We just had construction. Now we're heating, we're cooling, we're, we're using it for a lot of Saturday events too on Fort Sill. So was the initial build built um, based on last year's numbers? Is that how we came up with the original purchase order? Matt? Well, since the building was new, it was kind of a guess. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, because we never had the building fully open. Um, you know, God willing, we're going to get this. That, that's an expensive building to run. But we also have to remember that it, it's as big as Lawton High School. Um, it, it essentially the size of five elementary schools. So once you get it and we get all the construction, I think it will be in line and be a, um, um, comparable. So then back to the original question, then when we take ownership, then we just have like a PSO bill. We won't go through right. the U.S. Treasury. Then. Right. My understanding right now, we have to pay everything through them because they're they're. Every, every penny has to go through them at the moment. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, Ms. Brinsetter, I didn't know you were here. Um, Help me. <laughs> uh, no, we have always, sorry, we have always paid the bills for Sheridan Road and Toronto Road to the U.S. Treasury. Okay. They are oh, yeah. connected somehow to Fort Sill, and we are billed from them, and we have always paid them. Okay, so that will always continue. That will always yes. be. All, all utilities. Um, in regard to what um, Mrs. Um, John. John asked, um, yes, in that instance, when we put on the original purchase orders, we put them on. We put them on and get them to the board in June, for to set on July 1st, all standings. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we hadn't had any bills from the building freedom itself. So we elected to put it on just the way we had done it in the past. So we started to get the bills, say, August, September, October. But they're always a couple of months behind getting us the bills. So I didn't even have an opportunity to even get in a, I have a spreadsheet that kind of estimates it based on what we paid from year to year. In November, December was when we first started to get the bills. So then I tried to get an estimate as to where we would be to finish this school year out. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that once we get some more into, you know, heating, cooling, those sorts of things, it will kind of all balance itself out. But at this point, we still needed to try to make some projection as to where we were going to be on June 30th. So that was my best, you know. I hate to yes. say the word yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's our best estimate of where we are at this point. And like Dr. Deacon said, the building is as big as Central. I did visit with um, um, Kyle Smith, and he was going to look into that as to how much square footage it was for that building versus our actual electric bills against, like, say, Central. And we'll kind of keep it, we're going to be working on that to try to come up with you know, some other information for you. One final question, if I could ask about, uh, did the architects give us a layout of what they projected? Because if they're coming up with numbers that this should be more energy efficient and you say, they, I was told, or we were told, you're going to save on your electric, you're going to save on heat. Well, I thought that there were numbers that they had knowledge, come up with. never given that information. Okay. Well, that's maybe something we can ask the architects if they have. I mean, you can't come up with something that you think is a savings if you're just pulling that out of the sky. I think they can probably provide something of what they think should heat or cool a building like, like that, I would think. So. And I think we estimated it based on what Sheridan Road and Drawing Road both cost is what we estimated the um, utility bills. And so, all right. Thank you, Ms. Brancer. I was half right on some of the answers. God bless you. <laughs> Okay, did we want to go ahead and approve that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, and thank I, you for pulling it out because um, that's a big issue. Yeah. yeah. Big I'll issue. make a motion to approve uh, page 36 of the consent agenda. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. We need an executive session this evening. I believe we do. Okay. Make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Romeo? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Dr. Bridges? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Ms. Tom? Yes. I'm going to grab the envelope and the